it's the day after Christmas 2020 here in Forsyth County, Georgia. And you're looking at the top of Sunny Mountain. Sunny Mountain's got that big AT&T Long Lines tower up top. Big stout tower that iPhone won't take, keep in focus. But uh, it's up there, AT&T Long Lines Tower, uh, part of the uh, effort to win the Cold War. Hundreds of those towers dotted across America, across the Fruited Plain, providing communications for civilian and military use. It's such a nice night. Here in Georgia, we got moonlight through the pines. In Georgia, Georgia. Very nice evening. Turn my light on so you can see over there is an antenna and those white plastic spacers are just spacers, they're not really part of an antenna, but this antenna is made of discrete wires, individual wires. And there's five sets of wires, each for a very specific purpose. And we use very specific mathematics to determine their dimensions. The antenna is symmetrical. It's got wires on this side. It's got a center insulator. And it's got the exact same set of wires on the other side. So as seen from a distance, it kind of looks like this. And right there in the middle, we have Jack. Hi. Hi, Jack. How about that bright light in your eyes, huh? No, it's fine. <laughs> I'll turn it off here. Jack, what's your uh, amateur radio call sign? Kilo Mike 4 Zulu in the Alpha. KM4 ZIA. And inside the house, who's inside at the transmitter? KM4 BUN. Kilo Mike 4 Bravo Uniform November. Your sister, Audrey. Yes. And Audrey is sitting at the console of our amateur radio station. She's operating an ICOM 7300 uh, transmitter, transceiver. And she is going to help us out by transmitting, sending energy into this antenna. It's coming up into this feed line. You can probably see it in the dark here. This, this feed line here is a coaxial line. And it comes into the center insulator and it literally fans out, creating a multi-band dipole antenna. And uh, Jack, what do you have there in your hand? I'll turn the light on one more time. What do you have there in your hand? A long fluorescent tube. Long fluorescent tube, fluorescent light bulb, huh? Yep. I'm not gonna see those too often anymore. They're gonna be replaced with LEDs, but we have one. Yep. And this gives you a little better view of the, the antenna. One out one way, center insulator, where the radio energy is being fed, and going out another way. Okay, I'll get a hold of Audrey, Jack. Okay. KM4BUN from W4SDR. W4SDR, this is KM4BUN. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, Audrey. Are you all set there at the ICOM 7300? QSL, QSL. All right, and what are you going to feed us with here tonight? Hundred watts, twenty meter band. Okay, fire when ready. Yes, help. All right. So Audrey's got the antenna energized, and Jack is running the fluorescent light tube along the antenna. Uh oh! Wow! All of a sudden, we hit some energy, huh? Yep. Was there any energy toward the center of the antenna? Any voltage? Barely any. So let's go back to the You should say voltage, right? Yeah. And you see how dim it gets. That's toward the center. Yeah. But once we get out to the voltage peak of the antenna, which is at the very end of it. Ah, so the voltage peak is at the end of the antenna. Yes. Excellent, Jack. I'll step back a good bit and let you walk toward the center of the antenna. right to you. So there's our center insulator and it's 
them bald there, huh, Jack? Yes. So that tells us our voltage maximum is at what part of the antenna? At the very end. Very end. Okay, run on out there again, Jack. Yeah. Outstanding. All right, Jack. Nice demonstration. Yep. 7-3. Bye-bye.